Hey, it's Lou, and here's the thing. For tech companies, operating in China is like making a deal with the devil. On the one hand, there's the enormous financial promise of entering the world's largest internet market, one that's gonna keep growing. On the other, there's ethical compromise. There's participating in surveillance and the suppression of free speech. This is a bargain that Google is considering. A secret Google project, dubbed Dragonfly, was recently exposed by The Intercept. It involves search tools designed to comply with the e-liberal guidelines of China's Communist Party. Google has argued it can provide better information to a country that desperately needs it. But when one of the world's most powerful tech companies starts collaborating with the world's largest autocracy, the human rights implications can be scary and if China's influence in the tech community grows, might that mark the end of the free and open internet? Dragonfly would not be Google's first foray in China. In 2006, the company launched Google.cn, a censored version of its uber popular search engine. It was a controversial move. One Chinese activist whose name was omitted from search results wrote, to make money, Google has become a servile Pekingese dog wagging its tail at the heels of the Chinese communists. Meanwhile, a U.S. congressman called Google evil's accomplice. But the Google-China partnership eventually fell apart. The straw that broke the camel's back came when human rights defenders had their Gmails hacked, almost definitely by the Communist Party. So in 2010, Google said, enough is enough. They stopped censoring results. And just like that, they found themselves blocked by the Great Firewall of China, alongside Twiter, Facebook, sites that mentioned the Tiananmen Square massacre or criticized the government or did any number of things that didn't align with the Chinese Communist narrow worldview. For Google, this seemed to be a principled decision, the type of defining moment when companies sacrifice the bottom line for their values. However, within a decade of its high-profile, high-minded exit, Google was once again tempted by the sheer size of China's internet population. So, in the spring of 2017, with new CEO Sundar Pichai at the helm, Google secretly launched Project Dragonfly. When The Intercept broke the story, they reported that the search tools being built would comply with China's censorship guidelines. When objectionable material was filtered out, like, say, information on a protest, there would be a disclaimer that read, some results may have been removed due to statutory requirements. Google eventually confirmed the existence of the project without addressing specific details. The revelation of Dragonfly caused a huge row within the company. According to another bombshell from The Intercept, an internal memo critical of the project asserted the company was building spying tools. A division of Google's security team, bearing the Orwellian name Stop Leaks, reportedly tried to kill that memo, demanding employees with a copy delete it. Furthermore, when Pitchett and co-founder Sergey Brin discussed Dragonfly at a weekly staff meeting, their comments were leaked to a New York Times reporter in real time, who was tweeting them out as the meeting was still going on. The tweets started to appear on screen behind Bryn, who needless to say, was dismayed. At least one Google employee, a senior researcher, resigned over the project, and 1,400 employees signed an open letter expressing criticism of it. This type of employee activism within Google has inspired the company to end an artificial intelligence contract with the Pentagon and change the way it addresses sexual harassment. But in this instance, with Dragonfly, things remain to be seen. Pitcher has said that only 1% of searches in China would be censored. He maintains that Google search, even in a limited form, would provide Chinese citizens with better information than they currently have access to. Arthur Dong, a professor at Georgetown University's business school, told me Google is superior to the alternatives in China, and because it's able to provide a window to the world's information, it can be a key tool to achieve China's goal of modernizing its economy. The country doesn't want to be the world's manufacturer of cheap shit anymore. It wants to go high tech. Google can help. Keep in mind, however, that China has a history of demanding or outright stealing trade secrets from its foreign tech partners. And through its Made in China 2025 initiative, the country has recently emphasized homegrown tech companies. Therefore, critics worry that China is merely looking to poach Intel from Google. Now, many questions remain about Dragonfly. Pitcha has asserted the whole thing is very premature and simply exploratory. We wanted to learn what it would look like if Google were mm -hmm. in China. So that's what we've built internally. The thing about that, A, as mentioned, there was Google.cn from 2006 to 2010, so Google should probably have an idea what it would look like. And B, the censorship and surveillance have only gotten worse since 2010. 
Suzanne Nossel, CEO of PEN America, an organization dedicated to the freedom of expression, told me that since President Xi Jinping came to power in 2013, the repression of free speech, the stifling of dissent, and the erosion of protest rights have increased dramatically. Meanwhile, China has bolstered its big brother apparatus. It's cracked down on illegal VPNs. It's even figured out how to censor photos in one-to-one -one WeChat discussions. A report out of Penn notes that people who run afoul of China's online censorship can face intimidation, job loss, years-long prison sentences, and forced exile. Plus, Nasa told me every tech company knows there's no middle ground with the Chinese government. The censorship is not negotiable. They have their stringent, repressive rules, and everyone who wants into their market has to play along, including Google. For instance, Nasa said it's possible that Google would be forced to provide information on dissidents that could result in their conviction. There's actually precedent for this. In the mid-2000s, when Yahoo was operating in China, it provided information on a journalist's email account that revealed he leaked a document to a human rights group. For this offense, he served eight years in prison. No wonder, then, that several human rights organizations signed an open letter expressing concerns about Dragonfly, calling it an alarming capitulation by Google on human rights. A group of bipartisan U.S. senators also composed a letter, stating, it is a coup for the Chinese government and Communist Party to force Google, the biggest search engine in the world, to comply with their onerous censorship requirements and sets a worrying precedent for other companies seeking to do business with China. But actually, this precedent issue extends beyond China. Dong told me the fate of the World Wide Web is at stake. If Google folds the demands of the Chinese Communist Party, every country, especially the ones governed by authoritarians, will want to set their own rules for how the internet works within their borders. This is connected to an issue called cyber sovereignty. Scott Shackleford, a professor of business law and ethics at Indiana University, told me right now the ideal is an open and free internet with many stakeholders, private companies, regulators, nonprofits, individuals, etc., that by and large cut across international borders to figure things out together. But China and allies like Russia are trying to make the global standard a series of walled gardens in which every government is the master of their own digital domain. In an era of viral fake news and election meddling on social media platforms, cyber sovereignty might at least clarify who is responsible for policing the internet. And some Western countries do currently set limited guidelines. In Germany, denying the Holocaust is illegal, for example. But the cyber sovereignty approach is a slippery slope. While that German prohibition of Holocaust deniers is aimed at preserving history, China's erasure of the Tiananmen Square massacre is aimed at rewriting it. If this trend spread to other countries through the adoption of cyber sovereignty, we might live in a world of bubbles, of alternative histories. We'd lose common ground. Furthermore, if Google were in China, that powerful, trustworthy brand might lend credibility to the bullshit narrative strategically crafted by the self-dealing Communist Party. You can imagine how a conversation might go down in Shanghai. Hey, has the Chinese government really detained up to a million Muslims in the country? I don't know, just Google it. Oh, no mentions on trustworthy Google must not be a thing. But guess what? It is a thing. And if Google has a hand in deceiving people into thinking that outrageous human rights violations don't exist, then it's complicit in them. If Google wants to show Chinese people the world, let it be the full world, warts and all, not some sanitized version that keeps misled citizens docile. The internet, at its best, ought to upend persecution. We've seen this with hashtags like Me Too, with movements like the Arab Spring. Dragonfly looks like it might do the opposite. It might lend credibility to an autocratic regime that has showed a contempt for personal freedom and human dignity. And by the way, once Google folds, once they start playing by the Communist Party's rules, other industries might follow their lead. Hollywood studios, for instance, already consider in a tacit way Chinese censors when they're putting together films. But if Google openly partners with the censors in China, perhaps Hollywood would do the same. Perhaps in order to guarantee that their movies be shown to China's massive audience, they'd seek explicit Communist Party approval on scripts. And in that scenario, the movie you're watching in an American or European theater is influenced by some communist censor. In other words, if the Google domino falls, it can impact cultures across the world. Google is that powerful. And this is really what's dangerous about Google's sheer size in the global marketplace too. Even if internet users object to the re-entry into the Chinese market, 
What are we gonna do? Dong told me Google has become so integrated into our lives, into our workflows, that it's hard to escape. There aren't many alternatives. For instance, I would have to quit my job on this Google-owned platform if I wanted to put my money where my mouth is. Dong said there might be protests or boycotts, but nothing big enough to hurt Google's profitability. In other words, perhaps Google has grown too big to care, too big to take feedback seriously. Although there is still time to do the right thing, Google can rediscover its moral fortitude and honor one of its founding principles by stepping away from Dragonfly. Don't be evil. Okay, I'm gonna go live my life. By the way, we reached out to Google and they did not respond to our request for comment.